Hey, good morning, everybody. What's happening? This is Pastor Darren. I'm coming to you from Crossroads Church. Hey, this is our online edition. We want to thank you for, for attending our service this morning. It's January the 8th. Can you believe it, man? It, it's, listen, Happy New Year for all of you all that missed last week. Thank you for attending today. We're excited. We're Crossroads Church. We're coming to you from Cobb County, Georgia. We, listen, we, we have a lot of things in store this year, but we're excited, man, just to be online again uh, today. So um, listen, let me just say a couple of things. I want you to share this video. Please share this video. We're starting a new teaching series, How to Be Doubt. The bigger series is learning how to be a finisher, but our focus today is how to beat doubt. So I want you to share it. And then some of you are watching, but you've never subscribed. Subscribe to our video. Subscribe to our YouTube chat channel so that you can get the videos that will be sent to you automatically. Uh, they'll pop up on your whatever device you're using to let you know there's a new sermon or announcement or whatever we may have on YouTube. So go ahead and subscribe. And then don't forget, reach. Listen, new classes are starting at the end of January. Go to our website, crossroadsatl.com. Sign up. You want to be a part of reach because it's life changing. All right. And then don't forget today. Most importantly, you guys, is that we're starting our fast. Now, Austin has already mentioned it and I'm mentioning it again. We're starting our annual 10 day fast today. Fruits and vegetables is what we're, we're doing. We're sustaining from sweets and meat, fried foods. All right. Fruits and vegetables. And then go to the website for more details. But again, I'm excited, man, because because I love I love teaching. Y'all know it. And we're starting a new teaching series. It's called How to Be a Finisher. But our focus today is how to beat doubt. So let's pray. Father, we thank you today for who you are, what you've done for us. We're grateful for this, for this lesson, this sermon series. We commit it to your hands. Help us to finish like Jesus finished. Help us to be confident in who we are in you. We thank you and we give you praise. We commit this whole series to you for the whole month. We commit it to you. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. How to beat doubt. Have you ever been in, in, in a battle against doubt? Anybody? Come on. Can a brother get an amen? Listen, I need you to raise your hand. Give me something saying, listen, I've had to fight doubt. Most of us, how many of you guys have ever been in a real fight? I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, you know, a real fight. Like, you know, unless you really got to fight physically and, and spiritually. Because, because, see, real fights sometimes, man, they'll make you question your ability to actually win. If you've been in a real fight, you, at some point you're going you gonna to wonder, man, can I do this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Listen, if you consider yourself a winner, you've had to really deal. You really, you really had to learn how to deal with doubt. If you, if you're a real winner, right? That's just true. Let me give you an example. Listen, we live in America. This is a, this is the free enterprise capital of the world, and we've heard about, we've been talked about the American dream, and people come from all over the world to experience our culture of, of, of um, opportunity, right? And then so many of them jump in, they come and they jump in the fight of, of, of trying to reach the American dream and live a life that's, you know, that they once dreamed of, that maybe even they thought was impossible. But they jump in because they believe that our American system will give them that opportunity. I had a friend of mine who came to America and uh, she got here and, and uh, matter of fact, she was at Savannah's at Austin's wedding. And she got here and, and uh, her spouse passed away suddenly, unexpectedly, young, when we were all young, and she suffered a lot of pain, and uh, a, a lot of things just did not go her way. She was, listen, if you looked at it from the natural, it was, it was bad. She was not going to make it. She was by herself from a foreign country. She just was not going to make it. But after, after learning some principles and getting around the right people, Today, she is highly successful. Matter of fact, she's a millionaire. Yeah, matter, and, and then listen, not only is she successful and a millionaire, she went back and got her mom and daddy, brought them over here, all her brothers and sisters and brought them over here, and two of them are millionaires. Well, I know, you know, if you're like me, I was wondering, how did y'all do that? What y'all do, man, who, what, 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 what? Listen, and, and when, when we had our conversation, she never mentioned money. And this is not a money series, by the way, just in case you're wondering. She never mentioned money. She mentioned two things. She said, listen, I had a good teacher and I had a reliable system. And that system taught me how to buy and sell properties at the right time. That's how she did it. She said, listen, I learned how to do it at the right time. Oh, yeah. See, see again, this is not a money series. This is a system series, which is bigger than money. And Crossroads, you know, I, I, I've taught you guys. We, we, had, we talked about this 
uh, last year, maybe even the year before, about bad teachers. You don't want to attach your life to a bad teacher, right? And, and one of the things that doubt does is doubt is a bad teacher. You know why? Because, well, actually, actually, fear is the teacher. Doubt is the lesson, right? And, and what we don't, we don't want to attach ourselves to fear. And because, because again, you know, again, uh, part of our, our American culture is we toy with fear. We, we play with it. We listen to it. We'll pay to watch it on the movie theater. We'll put it up on our, on our stories online and read about it. We'll read about it all day. We're listening to it, not realizing now that it's teaching us principles to live our life by. Yeah. So, so my friend, when, 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 when talking to her and, and coming over, you know, how she did what she did and, and the success that she's having and all those things. Listen, one of the things she said to me was, I, I, um, I didn't have the same fear level that some of you all had because I came from nothingness. <laughs> so fear didn't intimidate her. Doubt didn't intimidate her. The less she, she, she said, I, I, I knew where I came from because I came from nothingness. The country I came from was so poor. Can't get into detail, but it was so poor. She said, I had nothing. So I was not afraid to go back to nothing because I knew I could get back to, to at least where I was. <laughs> Come on, man. Listen, fear is fear. Uh, fear's number one lesson is doubt. Yeah. So 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 we, 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 here we are in the new year. And we're talking about, you know, uh, uh, New Year's resolutions and everybody taking new chances and a new plan and risk and rebounding and all those things. So I caught you at the right time. Didn't I? Caught you at the right time. Yeah. Because, listen, my goal in this in this in this series is to help you create a system that will help you start something and finish it. That's it. So, so we're going to examine the system I think is most important. That's your spiritual system is to make sure. Because, listen, if I can build a system that will help me succeed using spiritual principles, I can just succeed in anything, in anything. Matter of fact, listen, I'm reading a book now. It's by uh, Jesse Duplantis. You, you might know him. He's a, he's a preacher. He's on television. He's online. Now everybody's online, but he's online. He's also on television. But listen, he wrote a book. It's really good. And I think the name of the book is I Never Learned to Doubt. I Never Learned to Doubt. And, and again, man, <laughs> If we're going to rebound, if we're going to win and overcome, we must know how to beat doubt every time. Every time it shows up, we can beat it. We can. Why? If I'm assigned, if I'm subscribed to a system. Listen, let's define this thing. What does doubt mean? Doubt is this. Doubt is the lack of confidence or certainty that something will or can happen. It's the, it's, 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 it's the lack of confidence. That I, I don't know how that's going to take. I don't know how it's going to, I don't know how it's going to happen. How is God going to help me? I, I don't know. That's all doubt is, is I don't know. I don't have an answer of how he's going to do it. Listen, it's an act of your will. It's what we choose to do. So if I choose to act, I can choose not. I mean, if I choose to doubt, I can choose not to doubt. All right? But remember, fear is, is doubt's teacher. Fear is. Fear is the thing that comes to teach us and tell us and convince us to doubt. I was I was at a, a, a it was a dinner a conference dinner and I had my wife was with me I, I was you know we was going around greeting people meeting people and uh, I think they had all veterans stand up I can't remember but but I was talking to this gentleman and he said to me we were talking he was you know I, I, I'm prior military and, and he, he was talking he said I said you military he said no no so we started talking I said well where are you from he said well I'm from right here in, in Cobb County oh okay so you know yeah yeah we just got having some small talk and I said so uh you know I said so you, you you're from here where you you lived here all your life oh yeah and then he said this he said to me he said I've never left Georgia I said what do you mean he said I don't go to Florida I don't go to South Carolina I don't go to Tennessee I only stay right here now, listen, this man was in his, he's pushing 80. And he said to me, I've never been to Florida, South Carolina, or Tennessee. I, I've never been. I, I said, why? He said, because I'm, I, stay right, I'm, I stay right here. I'm safe right here. See that? <laughs> listen, that kind of extreme thinking, that's not an accident. It's not an accident that he got to that point. You know why? Because he's been systematically led to do that. To think, listen, the man, I said, you've never been to this world? You got kids? Yeah. I said, you have, how did you take your kids on vacation? We ain't going nowhere. <laughs> what? I was like, well, he could not been married to my wife. I'm there right now. We've been divorced because uh, she going to travel somewhere. 
right? And so, so I said, I, he been married a long time, long, long time, long time. And I, I said, dude, how are you? He said, he said, listen, I don't go nowhere. I say right here. And, and again, that's so extreme. That's extreme thinking. And, and listen, the truth be told, truth be told, doubt is not, not it's just not a devil. Cause you know, you go to church and they go, cast that devil out. Yeah, it's not just a devil, it's a system that's designed to convince you or to push God out of your life and to convince you not to believe. That's all, that's all it is. It's, it's systematic. Let me give you an example. Let's define system so you understand what I mean. This is, this is what system means. Systems are things that are done according to a, you gotta get this, it's really good. Systems are, are things that are done according to a step-by-step -step plan in order to create something that is, that is for or against you. Okay, that's what a system is. It's a step-by-step -step plan in order to create something that is for or against you. And see, again, as I've been telling you all for the last several weeks, systems attach themselves to our lives. It is. So, so the evil that we're fighting you all is systematic. It's a systematic system. It's not just the devil. He has created a system. That's why the Bible said he's the God of this world. The God of what world? The God of the systems of this world that operate against us. He's a God of a step-by-step -step plan that's to create a chaos for us in our lives. Are y'all getting anything? Can a brother get an amen in the comments? Listen, let me read the scripture. This is James 1, 13 through 15. Let me give you biblical proof. Listen, it says, and remember when you are being tempted, do not say God is tempting me. God is never tempted to do wrong and he never tempts anyone. Temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. These desires give birth to sinful actions. And when sin is allowed to grow, it gives birth to death. Y'all see that? You see that? So again, sin is systematic. That's the Bible just taught us. It's systematic. So, so you know, let me give you an example. I, I, I told you I used to be a fornicator. I didn't know that was a systematic system against me. That was designed, it was a step-by-step -step process to hook me and drag me out. Let me give you an example. Let me show you. Look, look. The scripture teaches us that sin is systematic. It says, first of all, we're going we gonna to deal with temptation. That's the invite. That's, what you, that's when you get the invite. Say, hey, hey, look, come on, come on. Here, go the invite, you know. Come on. It looks real good, right? Yeah, yeah, you can do it. Come on. You look, ain't she cute? Yeah. And then you get enticed. What's that? What the, that that's when the picture's drawn. You know that when you see you see somebody, you think, oh, wow, they're so good looking. I bet life with them is like this. It's all wonderful. It's all great. No, see, that's the live version of it. But again, it's a step-by-step -step process. The temptation, the enticement, and then you get drunk. You, 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 the script says you're dragged away. What does that mean? You start doing abnormal things. <laughs> yeah, you start doing abnormal things like lying, like, like missing appointments, not showing up. Not bringing your check home. All these kind of things you we do when we when we're enticed by a system. Then the next one is a sinful action. Is that's when we buy in and we go ahead and commit go ahead and commit the sin. You see that? So again, all of this th these things are they're a step by step process designed against us. And doubt is a system. Matter of fact, doubt is a system. As I told you last week, doubt's a system that creates or affects your personal culture. Remember we talked about this last week. Okay, so it affects what you believe, it affects how you live, it affects what you value. Y'all see that? So, so again, so this is why we have to beat this system called doubt, because it affects what we believe, how we live, and then what we value. Y'all still here? Yeah, because listen, I'm, I'm going to tell you now, man. I'm going to tell you now. One of the things that the enemy is smart at, and it's, again, this is systematic, is that he is so smart and um, when these thoughts hit our mind, questioning God, when these thoughts come to us from the invitation to, to, make us, to make us not believe, he is so smart with just, you know, just, just, just nonchalantly driving it in our minds, in our thoughts. Hey, what's going, what are you going to do? What's going to happen? <laughs> what, 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 what's your next move? And you're like, oh, I don't know, Lord. I don't know. And that's when doubt, doubt sets in. That sets in just just that easy, right? So we but but during this series, we're gonna learn how to defeat it. What do I need to do to defeat this doubt? What do I gotta do? Just like I talked about my, my, my man that I met at that conference. Listen, he had been trained by the system of doubt to stay. You stay, you're safe if you stay here. No, you're not. You're not safe. Not only that, but you're rot, you're missing out on life. I mean, travel, enjoy yourself, go across the world, go to go to Paris, go to England, enjoy yourself. 
enjoy the God's beautiful creation. Listen, you're not winning if you just lock down in your house and scared to go out the door. That's listen, you've been you've been systematically trained to believe that you're saved, but that's not the truth. And that's how doubt works. So let's talk about it. how do we beat doubt? How do we beat doubt? First of all, you know, you guys know this again. Let me let me reiterate this. We need good teachers and a good system. If you got a good teacher and a good system, you, you can win any game, any contest, any fight, even against doubt. You can. Matter of fact, we're gonna use some biblical, we're gonna use some biblical people who did it. The, today our, our teacher is gonna be David. David gonna teach us how to fight. Because as I said, one of the things that doubt does is that is that doubt comes and it brings and it asks us questions. It asks us questions that we can't answer. And that's where it gets us. But we're gonna see how David went through this thing and God taught him, hey man, don't don't doubt. So when the questions drop in, see, when the question hits your head and the questions hit in, in your mind, you, 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 if you don't have an answer, we start, we start feeling like, oh, we don't, I'm not, I don't know what's going to happen. All these, Lord, have mercy. Help us, Lord. All this stuff. Right? Because we can't answer the question that doubt answers, that doubt gives. But David, man, David's going to teach us today how to deal with doubt when it shows up. What do you do? All right? So how, how do we beat doubt? Here's, here's what we do. Number one is that we got to build we got to build your spiritual system. Yeah, I told you that's going to be our focus. That's what I'm here to do. That's what they paid me to do. I got to help you build what? Your spiritual system. Man, come on. Listen, and then David's life, God had been teaching David this method of building a spiritual system while he was at the attending sheep. God God taught David. Not, not just God, his father too, right? But, but God taught David the spiritual aspect of these things. To, to how to believe and how to defeat doubt. Not to be afraid when things happen. God taught David. And look, guess what? He'll teach you too. He'll do the same thing to you while you where you wherever you are. Why wherever you are in your life, God will begin to teach you how to deal with doubt and how to beat it. How to beat it. Let me read the scriptures. Come on, we gotta read it. Listen. This is this is this is when David is showed up. You know, this is this is when he's about to fight Goliath. And you know, Goliath is, is threatening everybody, he's gonna kill everybody, he's gonna knock everybody's head off and all this good stuff. And David just David just happened to show up. All right, he just happened. Listen, this is this is this is our first Samuel 17, 22. Listen to this. It says, David left his things with the keeper of the supplies, hurried out to the ranks to greet his brothers. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the, Phil the Philistine champion from Gath, came out from the Philistine ranks. And then David heard him shout his usual taunt to the army of Israel. As soon as the Israelite army saw him, they began to run away in fright. Have you seen the giant, the mean ass? He comes each day to defy, the, defy Israel. The king has offered a huge reward to anyone who kills him. He will give him. He will give that man one of his daughters for a wife, and the, the man's entire army uh, family will be exempt from paying from paying taxes. You see that? So, so here comes David. Just just so happened <laughs> to show up, and here comes Goliath. And he's uh, he's he's breathing these. You know, he's breathing fire and brimstone. And da David said, well, "What what's going on here?" See, listen. One of the things you have to understand what doubt does, doubt comes to make you stuck. These men were stuck. They didn't know what to do. Oh, my God. Oh, what am I going to do? Oh, Lord. You, listen, you got a question you can't answer. How are you going to take care of your family? How are you going to get a new job? You got laid off. What's going to happen? I don't know. What are you going to do? See, see, what happens is, is doubt comes to your mind and it forces questions in your mind that you try to, to, to answer. And you can't answer because you don't have the answer. You can't have it. But what are you going to do? You got laid off your job. What are you going to do? Oh, no. Oh, no. No, listen. No, David is going to teach us how to get from being unstuck. You got to build a spiritual system, man. Build your system. I told y'all last week what my system. I ain't got time to go over it. But you got to build a spiritual system. Listen to this. Listen. First of all, next, listen. Your spiritual system must include a step-by-step -step plan, right? A step-by-step -step plan, which is designed to help you win in every fight. Yes. Listen, God was confident in David. Think about this. God was so confident in David, he allowed God, Goliath to show up at the right time. He was so confident in David. God sent him over there. You know, he, he, he was a, it was God behind the scenes working it. He sent David over there. And David was, God was so confident in David that when Goliath walked out, here come David. David was already on the scene. Why? Because he was spiritually prepared to win. He was already spiritually, God had already taught him. He'll teach you the same way when you develop your step-by-step -step plan, your step-by-step -step spiritual plan that you use on a daily basis. I was, I was having another conversation this week with some, with some, 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 some people, and uh, me, me and Leslie, and listen, we started talking about traveling again, traveling. I talked to the other guy about traveling, talked about them about traveling too. We were talking about traveling, 
And uh, boy, they went into it. I don't get on no airplane. Oh, no. Uh-uh, not me. I ain't getting on no airplane, girl. You know I ain't never, mm -mm, not me, never. And, I, and, I, and, and listen, they were stuck. You know why? Because doubt and fear, okay, had systematically talked him through, if you get on a plane, you're going to fall. Now listen, here's what I said. I said, there's hundreds of thousands of planes that go up every day and come down. No issues. Hundreds of thousands. You might get some turbulence, but you get turbulence in a car. I mean, you have some mishaps in the car. You have, listen, you have a mishap walking and fall. I've seen it, right? We laugh about it on people's Instagram and all that. We laugh at things that happen to people. So, so, and I know it's a big, bigger scale than an airplane. I, I know all that. But look at, look at the record. See, what fear does to keep you stuck, it lies to you the whole way to think that when you can get on that plane and you, uh, when you get on, it's going to fall. Come on now. No, no listen. See, your, 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 your spiritual system will help you identify lies that will cause you to be stuck. But you got to have a step-by-step -step plan. You can identify that and say, you know what? Let me just do some reading. That, that don't sound right. Hey, let me just... <laughs> you move on. That's a, so, so David showed up. Just, David showed up at the party and he's just as, he's just as confident. And God was confident because he, he, he was confident in David because he allowed him to be there. You know that? Listen, God will provide or allow the test you need. God will. Because listen, the Bible said when Goliath came out, the men ran. David didn't run. The Bible never said he ran. David didn't run. <laughs> no. No, he... Listen, people, you don't have to be stronger than your test. You don't have to be stronger than your test. You just need to know how to work your system to be, to be doubt. That's all. You got know to be stronger. David wasn't stronger than Goliath. See, God was just the Lord over David's system. But he wasn't stronger, not naturally stronger than Goliath. You're probably not naturally stronger than the things that are coming against you. No, that's why we don't live. We live according to his strength, not ours. We live according to his peace, not ours. We live according to his joy, not ours. Live no, I, don't live, I don't live in my old joy. No, I ain't got no joy. I ain't got no truth either. We, we, we talked about that a couple weeks ago. Go, go, go on YouTube and look it up. No, but listen, you don't have to be stronger than your, than your, uh, you know, your, the, 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 the enemy you're fighting. You don't have to be stronger. You just know how, you just have to know how to work your system to defeat you. That's it. <laughs> and that's all David. David will walk around and say, well, what's going on here? Well, you know, he comes out, he does all that. David was like, for real? You shut the front door. He does all that? Really? And everybody's scared. David ain't scared. David ain't moved. Why? Because he got a plan. God, God had taught him. And then, listen, and then we're we going to find out later, God, uh, God had already tested David before. So David was used to God testing him. He was used to things happening. So, so when things happened, he wouldn't move by. No, he was still confident. And see, in order to beat doubt, we got to be the same way. And the way we get there is you got to develop a step-by-step -step plan. What do you do? Mine, I told you last week, I'm going to give it to you now. It's not up there, but you got to listen to me. My spiritual plan, prayer, the study of scriptures, attending in-person services. Oh yeah, I serve in my church. I'm in my, in my church community. Yeah, I give. That's part of my spiritual system. So when doubt shows up, I say, oh no, doubt, you can't have, no, 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 no. And see, again, it's a fight. Now with all of us, we got to fight with it. We got to fight. But David, David, God had provided enough tests for David, for David to be comfortable, co confident. And see, God will provide a test for you, what? So that you can be confident. Whenever doubt shows up, talking trash, just like Goliath. That's all doubt does is talk trash. And it does it with questions. It does it with questions that you can't answer. What's going to happen? Well, if we quit this job, if we lose this opportunity, oh, where is it going to happen? Where is the supply coming from? You know, listen, listen, I, and I, I'm going to get into I don't want to get ahead of myself. But we, uh, we'll learn later. We got to talk back and say what God says. That's how you win. You win it. All right, come on. We got what's number two? Number two. Number two. Listen. How do we beat doubt? How do we beat doubt? Number two. Include Thanksgiving in your system. So as you build your spiritual system, you got to make sure Thanksgiving is in there because that's what the Scripture teaches us. He's, the Scripture says, "Be thankful in all things." Listen to this. Let's look at the Scripture again. Uh, this is again First First Samuel seventeen. We're in twenty seven now. It says, and these men, these men gave David the same reply. So David's walking around asking, hey, what's going on with this? And what is the reward? So he, listen, he's already focused on how am I going to whoop this dude? 
That's why he's asking about the reward. He's already, see, you, you see what a victory mindset sounds like? He's already talking about it. So what's the reward? What will happen? What, tell me again. And then they told him over here. He went on the other side. What, what will happen? See, that's a victory mindset. When, we, when, when, we, when, I, when I go out here and kill this, what am I going to get? Victory mindset. You see that? So listen, let's read it. And these men gave David the same reply. They said, yes, this is the reward for killing him. But when David, oldest brother Elab, heard David talking to the men, he was angry. What are you doing around here? Anyway, he said, he demanded, what about those few sheep you're supposed to be taking care of? So now he's trying to, he trying to, you know, he's trying, he, 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 uh, he trying to embarrass David. You know, he's trying to look down on him, right? Listen, he says, I know about your pride and deceit. You just want to see the battle. So he said, David, I know you pride. No, that wasn't pride. That was confidence. That's why David was talking. He was telling coming from a, a victory mindset. He, he, you know, David was stuck, like, yo, what's up? What's the, what's the prize? What's the prize? <laughs> His brother got angry and said, hey, man, stop playing. Go home. David said, no. What have I done? David replied, I was only asking the question. David, listen, David said, hey, I'm only trying to feel, feel, feel my way through this thing to see what's, what, what's, what, what's the reward. See, that's, that's the victory mindset. I ain't focused on the fight. I'm focused on the what? The reward. Thanksgiving, listen. Thanksgiving helps you focus on what God has already done, all the rewards God has done for you, all of them. That's why it's so important as we learn how to beat doubt is you be thankful every day, every day. That, that has to be a part of your step-by-step -step plan every day. Here's why. Thanksgiving builds confidence. Thanksgiving. Builds, that's why David was so confident. You ever read David's Psalms? Read his Psalms. He says, Psalm 37, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging for bread. Come on, man. You can't, you can't, you can't get no, you can't get no better than that. Psalms 100, he, he, he talks about, he said, I fear no evil. Come on, think about that. These are things that David wrote. He said, I fear no evil. How did he get to that point? Step by step plan. Step by step. It's systematic. All right. Again, doubt is a system that's coming against us. We have to be systematic to, to, to defeat it. And we can be. All right. Now, so again, Thanksgiving builds confidence. It reminds us of who God is and who we're dealing with. Because we'll forget. That's why David said, he's defying the armies of the living God. <laughs> so David said, hey, listen. So again, that victory mindset is saying, hey, we got to remember who we're dealing with, who's on our side, who's working for us, who is helping us build our system that's going to overcome doubt. Because see, listen, some of us, man, one thing happened. One thing. You got you, 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 you to go see a counselor. Come on, man, they, 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 listen, they don't even lay off. They just, there's just a rumor that layoffs is going to happen. There's a rumor layoffs is coming. And you, listen, you panic. You go into, you go into deep depression. Come on, man, that shouldn't be. That's doubt. That's doubt. That's fear talking to your mind, causing doubt to come in for you to think that God don't know anything about your life. No, God knows. David was on the scene acting like God already knew. <laughs> yeah, man, he was so confident. He was like, listen, God already knows about this thing. So what's the reward? <laughs> so you see that? So when God's part of your system, part of your your step by step plan to overcome doubt, right? When he's when he's the Lord over that system, you can be confident. You can be confident. Why? Because everywhere you go, God's already on the scene. And see, David knew God's on the scene. That's why he he walked around like, what's the prize? What's the reward? What what is it? <laughs> Listen, being thankful helps you not uh, helps you not fear moments that doubt uses to intimidate you. Did y'all get that? Let me say it again. Being thankful helps you not fear moments that doubt uses to intimidate you. Because again, see, a moment like this would intimidate most people. Come on, you ever had an intimidating moment? Man, I, I had one, I got laid off my job, making good money. Y'all know my story, right? Things have happened, me and my wife doing well, then boom, moments happen. What are you going to do? Here, here come the question. Every listen, every time doubt shows up, it's going to ask you questions you can't answer. What you gonna do? What's that? How you gonna feed them kids? How you gonna tell your parents? How you gonna tell your how you gonna tell your, you know, the people that you love? What happened? Oh, you look, it's another bad decision. What we gonna do? Oh my God, how we gonna pay our bills? We gotta borrow money. All those things hit your head. Just flooded hit your head. <sighs> right? But being thankful helps you not fear moments that doubt, doubt, doubt will use to try to intimidate you. David, David, David would intimidate by Goliath. Listen, he already fought a lion and a bear. He was like, I ain't scared of him. I ain't afraid. <laughs> Again, that's that victory mindset. Walk, walking through the, walk through the door like, hey, man, what's he doing? What's, what's up with him? No, I, I've been here before. And see, again, 
You might have never experienced the battle you're in right now, but God has, he on your team. So the experience and the knowledge and the wisdom that God has now is available to you. And listen, the same thing, when David, when David showed up on the scene, all of God's power, all of God's wisdom was available to him. That's why he defeated Goliath. And the same thing is available to us. That's why we have to be thankful. Why? So that we tap into what he's already done. He'll help us. He'll tell us what to do. He already knows how he's going to help us. But, but we have to chill, right? Just chill. God's on the scene. I'm good. What's the reward? <laughs> how are we getting over this? What did you say? Let me repeat it. Listen, David wanted them to repeat it. Can you say that again? How? And that's what we have to do. Baby, how are we going to get over this? We're going to, baby, we're going we're gonna to hunker down. We're going to save. We're going to get a new job. We're going to save. We're going to obey God. Okay, good. Yes. That's it. Ah, oh, man, I feel good. I'm preaching good. Can a brother get an amen in the comments? Oh, yes. So don't forget, include things. Some of you all, listen, I have a friend of mine. True story. He led my mom to Christ. He led my mom to Christ, who eventually led all of us to Christ. But, but I was talking to him this past week, and I, I've never seen him phased by a fight. Oh my God, I, I'm telling you the truth. This is not make up. It's not that make up. I've seen this man experience some 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 crazy stuff that it would shake most of us. Some 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 some, some people have died that were dear to him, lost his kids in in a car accident. I mean, just bad. I've never seen him shaking. Never, never. So I asked him. I said, Hey man, hey man, how you get that strong? <laughs> I need to know when this stuff hits you. I, he, you know what he says? He says, because I don't hesitate when it comes my way, I attack it. I hit it with the word of God. I start confessing the scriptures. I start, I start binding the devil. Yeah, you see, now he, yeah, he, 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 he goes in, but it shows in his life. It shows in his voice. It shows in his prayers. He, 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 he just not afraid. He said, I'm not going to let him make me afraid. God is with me. <laughs> see, listen, he believed these things. Just like David. David believed these things. And my friend, he, he always say, I don't let a thought linger. He talk about contrary thoughts that make me doubt and all that. Like, like these people are sitting here and they worry about the Goliath. They're repeating, oh my God. He doesn't let thoughts linger. He attacks the thoughts with the word of God. And that's what, listen, David was so trained. He's so ready. He was so confident that God was on his side. Nothing moved him when Goliath said. The, none of that moment moved David. But it happened. It'll happen for us, but we got to be trained. And the, and the training starts with being thankful. Every day, you should, you should get up in the morning being thankful. If it's just three things, give God, be thankful for three things. Give God thanks for three things. Your life, your health, your kid, your family, whatever. Just do it over and over again. And watch the impact, that system of just repeated doing it, watch it would have on your life. Come on, we got to go. I, I'm, I'm running out of time. Listen, number three, how do we beat doubt? Number three, listen, we have to avoid limiting isolation. <sighs> yeah, no, listen, you need a community of faith to help you fight. I don't care how strong you are. I don't care how wonderful you think you are. No, you need a community of faith to help you fight. And let me help you understand something. Listen, let's put things in perspective. Church online is wonderful. We're using it. We have to right now until we get our place settled and we get every, all, the, all the things ironed out. That's good. That's great. But listen, that this is this is it's online, right? But it, it's, it's not designed to be a major part of your life when you can be in person. No. No, no, you need to be around God's people. So church online is good for those people got to work, people got small kids, not feeling good, all those things. Yes, we're going to watch online. But if I have the ability to be in person, I need to get my happy hips down there and be in person. You know why? Because you can't be down in isolation. No. And part of the preparation for you to win is within your community. It's within your community. Listen, listen. Uh, I'm about to run out of time, but, 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 but listen, David's father taught him how to tend to them sheep. He was a shepherd. His father, his community of shepherds taught him how to be a sheep. Now, God took it to another level and gave him that, that, that spirit that he had in him, all right? But his father, as a matter of fact, let's read it. First Samuel uh, 17, 34, I'm going to read just a couple of uh, verses. Listen, it says, but David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats. And he said, when a lion and a, or a bear comes and steal a, a lamb from my flock, I go after it with a club and I rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and I club it to death. He said, I've done this both to lions and bears and I'll do it to this pagan Philistine too. For he has defied the armies of the living God. You see that? You see, you see that? 
And then he says, hey, if the Lord rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear, he'll rescue me from this. <laughs> so, so, so listen, David didn't learn that in no isolation. You didn't get that in isolation. Yeah, you might have, God might have given give him that tenaciousness that he had that came from God. But learning how to take care of them sheep and learn how to pre prepare for them and all that, that came from a, from, a, from a community of people. And I'm here to tell you, people of God, if you want to know how to beat doubt, you need a community of people. You can't do it by yourself. Because so, sometimes you need... In, Encouragement. Encouragement means it's to give courage. You need somebody else to give you courage. I talked about my friend uh, who, who led my, my parents to, to Christ. Listen, every time I talk to him, he gives me courage. <laughs> every time I just hugged the man on uh, uh, Saturday. I just hugged the man. We start talking. And, and, and listen, it, it took seconds and he was encouraging me. Come on, man of God. What is God doing? What is God saying to you? You got to keep pushing. You got to keep fighting. I know the fight is hard, but you got to keep fighting. God already got you. He, 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 listen, he's going to cause you to win. <laughs> I'm just telling you, that's just how the man is. Because, and that, listen, that's part of my step-by-step -step plan of my spiritual plan, plan is to be around God's people so that I might get strength. David was a wonderful person, but he didn't get it all by himself. Learn how to take care of the sheep. He got it from his community. Yeah, because what we have to understand, people, is doubt works in the dark. When you by yourself, you, 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 listen, you're a target for the enemy. You get some bad news when you by yourself. That's one of, that, listen, that's one of the reasons we have this inclination to pick the phone up and call somebody. Because we have an inclination to, to know, hey, man, I, this is, I got I to gotta do something. I, gotta, I need somebody to help me. Right? We might not say those words, but it's on us to just, just, just let me call my girlfriend. You heard me hurt. I need you to pray. I need you. Why? Because we're designed to do it in, in, in community. So thank God for being online. But when we come to person, we need to see you, right? Because if you want to learn how to beat doubt, you need to do it in community, not isolation. Y'all here? Come on, man. Yeah. Now, let me, let me get to my last one. But let me say this again. The community of faith. There is something among the community of faith, we know it's the spirit of God, right? That only happens in, in among the, the community of faith. You, you, you're not gonna mature in isolation. You're just not. Your plan to succeed is not gonna work you doing it by yourself. No, you must include God's people. My last point, come on, we learned how to beat that. We know how to beat that. This is gonna be a great series. I want, you to, I want you to get it, this whole series. Next week's gonna be good, we talk about something different, but how to be a finisher, because we wanna start something and finish it. We want to start, listen, own your own company. You can do it. You can do it. But you want to start, but you got to have the tenaciousness that David had to finish. All right? Here we go. Listen, listen. How do we beat out? Number four is we have to use our spiritual authority. You got to use it. As I said before, you're not operating in your own strength or your own reasoning when it comes to dealing with doubt. You're not. You can't because doubt will outreason you. Doubt will tell you a hundred times you got laid off your job. You're not going to make it. Here's why you're not going to make it. You can't out-reason doubt. Doubt, it, it, it has too much of an ammunition. It has this whole temporary world that are saying, oh, remember, remember that story you saw online? Remember that people? Remember you saw them folks homeless? Oh, see, it takes you to the extreme, don't it? Telling you all these lies and these things that might happen. No. See, but you have to use spiritual authority. That's what Jesus gave us. He gave us authority to say, oh, no, doubt, you're not going to. No, no, I don't believe that. I know this is a choice, and I have my choice is I believe the word of God. That's me using my spiritual authority. When I use the word of God, and I begin to speak the word of God. Listen, faith will defeat doubt every time. Faith will defeat doubt. But listen, faith will defeat doubt, but 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 you can't be reasoning. <laughs> I mean, you, you know what I'm saying? When it comes to doubt. Because <sighs> that's what we do, man. We want to try to figure it out in our mind and and, and, and now, like, our, our culture is trying to replace God with all these different things and all these different tools of, of trying to find peace and trying to find love and loving yourself and all oh, this stuff we going in, all oh, that. Yeah. yeah, all that nonsense. No, listen, if you're going you're gonna to defeat doubt, it's about, it's about uh, 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 increasing your faith or using your faith. Read the faith stories in the Bible. That's why I love reading about David and Goliath. If you're in doubt, listen, if you're in a faith fight, read the stories that, that overcame. Pick up Nehemiah. Sorry, I was reading Nehemiah there because that's what we're doing. Our church is rebuilding. I was reading Nehemiah uh, the other day. I was reading Nehemiah. Why? Because I, I, I want to see what did they do to rebuild. <laughs> the Bible said they worked with one hand, had a sword in the other hand. Like, you better, you, you walk in here. I'm going to knock you out. <laughs> they were working with one hand, had a sword in the other. 
right? So I read these faith stories. Why? Because they feed my faith so I can defeat doubt. I can feed my faith and not my reasoning. Because if I, if I stay in doubt, I'm, I'll get into reasoning and I'll reason myself right out the answer. Come on, man. And then what else? You got to talk back to doubt. You got to talk back. You got to use the scriptures. Listen, let me show you this. This is First, first Samuel 17, 34. Listen, then, then Saul gave David his own armor. This is the king. A bronze helmet and a, and a goat and a coat of mail. David put it on. He strapped the sword over it and took a step or two to see what it was like. For he had never worn such things before. You see that? David had said, I ain't never did this before. <laughs> I can go in. I can go in. I can't go in these. He protested to Saul. I'm not used to them. So David took them off. He picked up five stone, smooth stones and a, from a stream and put them in his shepherd's bag. And then he armed only with the shepherd's staff and sling. He started across the valley to fight the Philistines. You see that? That's one of the best stories of all time. He took some, some rocks out, 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 the, out the brook and put them in a bag. He got his shepherd's staff that he'd been fighting with, fighting bears and lions with. And he said, I got Goliath. Ah, ah. Listen, that's how you beat doubt, man. That's how you beat. You got to feed your faith. Feed your faith. And then you got to talk back. Use the scriptures. No, David says, oh, no, no. I, I'm going to go with what I'm used to. See, if you're studying the scriptures, you're going to use them. I use the scriptures. I confess God's word. I say what God's word says about my circumstances. That God, hey, listen, I'm blessed. Yes, I'm blessed. Why? Because God causes the blessing. The Bible says he blesses the pure of heart. He blesses. He causes him to prosper. So that's what I say. I, God calls me to prosper, not my job. God calls me to prosper, not my bank account. God causes me to prosper. It's him who causes me to prosper. You see that? So I have to, so you got to talk back to doubt. You can't let doubt do all the talking. No, you got to talk. And if you do these things, what are you doing? I'm developing a step-by-step -step plan of how to be, defeat doubt in my life. And if I do it consistently, even when there is no trouble, I still work my plan. I'm still confessing God's word. I'm still speaking with authority against things that come against me. If I'm doing these things on a regular basis, when, whenever doubt shows up, oh, no, no, you can't come here. No, 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 get on out in Jesus' name. Only the, uh, It's like Jesus told Satan. And I'm going to close with this. G Satan came to Jesus and he was talking his, you know, he took him out there to tempt him and all that stuff. And Jesus said, hey, man, listen, chill, chill, dude, chill. No, no, I worship God and God alone. Every time Satan had a uh, response or a question for Jesus, he hit him with the word. Bam. No, 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 no. I worship God and God alone. <laughs> Satan could, listen, Satan couldn't do nothing, but the Bible says he left. And he'll do the same. Doubt will leave you if you keep, if you use your spiritual authority, use your faith in God and continue to talk back using the scripture. It'll, every time he got to leave because he can't stay. All right. So again, listen, that's that's just that's that's just lesson number one. We got a couple of more. It's going to be real good. We're going to we're going to learn how to be a finisher this year in 2023. The first thing we got to do, we got to learn how to how to how to defeat doubt. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the lesson that we heard today. Help us not to be not just to be hearers, but doers of your word. Thank you for the plan that you're going to teach us and help us. To, that we might work on a daily basis. So when things come our way, we're ready, we're equipped, we're like David. We're not moved by what we see, but we only move by what we believe. We thank you for it in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, listen, if you're here today, this is the second Sunday in January, 2023. You need a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's where you want to start. You want to really defeat doubt, that's where you start. He has to be the Lord over your spiritual system. If, you, if that's you, pray this prayer after me. Say, Father, I come to you in Jesus' name, right? I invite you into my life. Be my Lord and my Savior. Teach me your ways. I'll live for you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Hey, if you prayed that prayer in all sincerity and honesty, you're born again Christian. Type new in the comments. We'll send you some information what that means to be uh, a follower of Christ. If you are looking for a good church, you want to partner with Crossroads, we're a good church. We want to partner with us. Yes. Hey, listen, some of you all partner with God in your finances. You, you, you're too up and down with it. You're good one Sunday, good one Monday, and we don't see you no more. No, listen, be consistent and watch God be consistent for you when you need him the most. He'll bless you. Now, listen, doubt is the thing that will come and tell you to stop giving. Don't give. Don't lie. Don't start 2023 out. Give and be consistent with your giving, your tithing, and your giving. All right? It's Pastor Darren, man. I love you all. I'm excited about this series. It's going to be hot. How to be a finisher. How to beat doubt. I love you. See you online this week. And listen, one more thing. We're coming to, uh, we'll be telling you about where, where, where and when we'll be coming back in person. All right? Love you. Peace. See you next week.